Some of these men will soon be back with their outfits. They are only slightly wounded and will receive relatively brief treatment in the combat zone. But others have been hit hard and will need many weeks and months of treatment and convalescence. They will be transferred to numbered general hospitals in the communication zone where equipment is more elaborate and difficult specialized procedures can be more readily performed. The seriously sick and wounded are transported to general hospitals by ship and by plane, by ambulance and ambulance train. General hospitals, whenever possible, are located near main ports of debarkation and have good road and railway facilities so that the wounded can be moved as promptly and as comfortably as possible. There are numbered general hospitals throughout the world in all theaters of operation. Hospitals of three sizes, 1,000 bed, 1,500, and 2,000. They are housed in many types of structures which vary with the climate, terrain, and the building materials obtainable. For example, theater of operation buildings in New Caledonia, a converted civilian hospital in England. In India, wards with thatched roofs. In New Zealand, a public building. Brick walls to protect against the blazing heat of Iran. Nissen huts in England. Floored tents on Rendova. A hastily constructed hospital on Leyte. In the early days of the New Guinea campaign, before the engineers arrived, it was even necessary for medical personnel to pitch in and build their own hospital. Two or more general hospitals may be combined under a separate headquarters to form a hospital center. The hospital center performs the administrative and command functions for all the general hospitals attached to the center. This pooling of resources results in economy of personnel, facilities, and overhead. For example, the center headquarters may act as a single receiving and evacuation section for the several general hospitals comprising the center. In this way, duplication is avoided. Another advantage of this pooling lies in the opportunities for specialization. Individual general hospitals attached to the center may be assigned to treat specific types of injuries or diseases. And this too makes for both economy and medical efficiency. The general hospitals are usually situated fairly close to the hospital center. But before examining the workings of a general hospital, let's see how the organization is set up. Attached to the hospital center are from two to ten general hospitals. Each general hospital has two groups of services, one administrative and the other professional. The administrative group consists of five departments, personnel, registrar, mess, supply, and utilities. The professional group also consists of five services, surgical, medical, dental, x-ray, and laboratory. Various auxiliary teams like laundry, refrigeration, and postal may be attached to the hospital to perform special tasks. Such teams are assigned only when the services they perform cannot be supplied by other nearby organizations. Well, the patients have been evacuated from the combat area and are now ready to enter a numbered general hospital. Incidentally, those men exercising in the background are not patients. They are corpsmen going through the conditioning phase of a training course. The medical department requires an efficient and thoroughly trained group of officers and enlisted personnel to tend to the needs of the sick and the wounded. The patients will now be admitted to the hospital at the receiving and disposition section. It's one of the few occasions when they will have any direct contact with a branch of the administrative service. But the professional services, on the other hand, are involved in their day-to-day -day existence, their treatment and recovery. 
Let's take a look at the way the professional services operate. First, surgery. In the general hospital, surgical procedures are usually more difficult and complex than those in the field, evacuation, or station hospitals. Therefore, the serious cases are transferred to the general hospital where the facilities for treatment are more elaborate. The surgical service is made up of various sections, general surgery, orthopedics, eye, ear, nose, and throat, septic surgery, urology, and neurosurgery. A thoracic section exists in 2,000 bed hospitals only. The chief of the entire service not only performs surgery himself, but acts as consultant to the entire hospital in all matters pertaining to surgery. Each surgical section is headed by a medical corps officer who may act as consultant when authority has been delegated to him by the chief of the surgical service. He assigns each case to the appropriate surgical ward and is responsible for all operative procedures. Surgical teams are sometimes called in to augment the regular personnel. These teams consist of a surgeon, an assistant, an anesthetist, and three enlisted technicians. After the operation, patients are assigned to the appropriate wards. For example, some orthopedic patients may require the use of elaborate traction apparatus. It goes without saying that the sympathy and professional skill of the nursing staff play a large part in the process of recovery. Other patients may be assigned to general wards corresponding to the various sections in the surgical service. Post-operative treatment is also given in the various clinics, like eye, ear, nose, and throat. This patient has lost an eye and is being fitted with a substitute. The new eye is going to make a great difference, both in his appearance and in his state of mind. The physical therapy section ordinarily functions as a division of orthopedics and is operated by a staff of women who are commissioned physical therapy aides. Those hot swirling hydrotherapy baths help to tone up the nerves and muscles of injured limbs. Hydrotherapy is also effective in keeping the stumps of amputees clean. Now for the medical service. In general, its functions are the same as those in the station hospital. It's organized in various sections, like general medicine, communicable disease, gastrointestinal, cardiovascular, and so on. The dental service is charged with all dental procedures, including x-ray, laboratory work, and the keeping of dental records. Among the specialists on the dental staff are a prosthodontist and an oral surgeon. They are assisted by several enlisted technicians. A fourth service is X-ray. In addition to handling X-ray work, both in the department itself and in the wards, it is charged with fluoroscopy and the location of foreign bodies. Also, all processing and interpretation of films. The laboratory service is composed of three sections. One, clinical, has jurisdiction over all work involving blood counts, pathology, autopsies, and microscopic sections. The biochemical section performs tests on categories like blood sugars and non-protein nitrogen. A third section performs bacteriological and serological tests, including Wasserman's and Kahn's. As in the case of receiving and disposition, the laboratory sections at the various hospitals assigned to the center may be pooled to operate a single laboratory. All hospitals at the center would then have access to the facilities of this central laboratory. The pharmacy prepares and issues drugs and prescriptions for all divisions of the hospital. It is supervised by a medical corps officer and operates under a technician who is a registered pharmacist. When patients have recovered sufficiently to require little or no further medical care, but are still not ready to return to duty, they undergo a period of reconditioning here at the hospital 
or perhaps later at a convalescent camp. All the devices and techniques of reconditioning are employed and strength gradually returns to those injured bodies and limbs. The whole program is designed to make the men thoroughly fit again, ready both physically and mentally to return to duty. However, not all of them are so fortunate. Others need further hospitalization. Those requiring special care in the final stages of treatment, like plastic and neurological surgery, and certain delicate eye operations, are always evacuated to the zone of the interior. This is not because general hospitals overseas are unequipped to treat these cases. It's simply a matter of medical corps policy. Also evacuated are those patients who obviously require more than a four-month period of treatment. For these, the next lap is a general hospital in the States.